Back on the Sports Max Zone, some 200 athletes from 27 countries are expected to compete at Saturday's NACAC New Life Invitational Track and Field Meet at the Anson Sports Complex in Miramar, Florida. The event is part of the World Continental Tour Series and is designated Silver Status. Now, some intriguing clashes are expected, especially in the men's and women's sprints. In the men's 100, the world leader, Trayvon Brommel of the United States, will face the 2011 world champion, Johan Blake of Jamaica. Brommel goes into the race as favorite, the 25-year-old who secured a bronze medal at the 2015 World Championship in Beijing has run 9.88 seconds this year, not far off his lifetime best of 9.84 set in 2015. Now Blake, the 2011 world champion, has gone as fast this year as 10.05 and may need to improve on that if he is to top the field. Brommel is unbeaten in finals while Blake has lost once in his five finals. On the women's side, double Olympic sprint champion Elaine thompson Hira and Brianna Williams, who set a Jamaica junior record 10.98 seconds on Monday, are the ones to watch. thompson Hira has run 10.78 this season, with, uh, uh, which incidentally was the last time she competed on the 2nd of May. That effort by her followed withdrawals from the Diamond League meets in Gateshead and Doha. Also of note is that the Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago sprint relay teams will be trying to improve their times to qualify for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. These are the men, Jamaica with their time of 38.15, are ranked 14th, while TNT are 38.46, they sit 15th on the list. Twelve teams have already qualified for Tokyo with the remaining four needing to hold a top 16 spot to uh, secure qualification the deadline the 29th of June. Joining us now to look ahead to the meet is President of the North America, Central America and Caribbean NACAC Track and Field Association, Mike Sands. So we had a Bahamian talking basketball earlier on and here's a big man from Bahamas now in track and field. Uh, Mike, uh, first of all, um, the logistics in getting this meet together and the importance of the meet to this, to this region. Well, first of all, let's start with the importance. The importance of the meet was the fact that one of the things we talked about as NACAC, we had to create opportunities and competition for our area athletes. And so that was the primary purpose for us doing this because it's part of our overall strategic plan where we intend to create more um, diamond, diamond league type events like the circuit. Um, and so, so that our athletes don't have to be going all over the globe uh, to have some good competition. And so that's part of the plan. This is the foundation of the plan that we are building. And so this is a historic occasion and event that NACAC is now moving on to create its own circuit in conjunction with our member federations. And so here you have a historic occasion where we're starting the NACAC New Life Invitational that we hope to be a yearly event that will culminate with our season on this side of the globe before the athletes go into to Europe and then come back home for their championships and other European meets. So that's that's where we are on the foundation of this historic event. Yeah, and um, because and because it's sorry. Florida, Mike, obviously from a proximity I'm not, I'm standpoint, sorry. closest to the Caribbean. Mike, I think we have, we probably had lost Mike. Mike, are you hearing me? I think we lost the audio there on Mike. Um, we, we were seeing him, but um, trying to get a sense from Mike Sands, president of NACAC. Um, about, well, he just explained the importance of the meet, but certainly it affords, as he just mentioned, George and Mariah, an opportunity for Caribbean athletes to get some uh, valuable competition in ahead of the Tokyo Olympic Games for many of the places in the Caribbean. They have not been able to conduct uh, track and field meets at a high level consistently for the past year, so meets like these pretty important. Definitely, and I'm looking forward. I think there are so many exciting storylines. Uh, I know Jamaica is headlining the event. I think you'll have, if I'm not wrong, at least 50 participants. And I think um, the one with Elaine versus, of course, Brianna Williams, that event particularly is one that I will be looking forward to, as well as the U.S. Travon going up against uh, another Jamaican. I think those events, George and Lance, are ones to really watch closely because the storylines coming out from those will be exciting. Good to feel NACAC's presence. Uh, there was an interview we conducted a few weeks ago on this program looking at uh, some track and field performances in North America. And I was making the point to Leighton Levy 
that there are people here in this side of the world who get the feeling that the athletes from this part of the region are undercooked going yeah. into Tokyo because there haven't been the meets that you usually see them competing at, not just here, but, but, but overseas as well. So for NACAC to step in, put this, put these, these meet, this, this event together and giving these, op the, these athletes the opportunities to really sharpen their, 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 their skills for Tokyo is very, very good. There are some athletes who you think have th their programs are still behind where they'd like it to be even in this truncated season. I say that there are athletes with programs behind because there are athletes who, whose programs are right on top for Tokyo. So this will bring along those who are lagging. The laggards will come on while those who are right where they ought to be will get another another opportunity to see where they are and where they are in terms of what they want to achieve in Tokyo. Yeah, I think we have Mike Sands back online to continue our discussion. Uh, Mike, I was making the point earlier on that because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, a lot of the regular meets in the Caribbean haven't been staged in the past year or so. And Florida affords from a proximity standpoint, a, you know, pretty easy access for a lot of our athletes to, to get there and get some good competition in. I'm not sure if you, are you hearing me? I'm hearing you, yes, go ahead, yeah. It's, it's fading in and out, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, so what I was saying earlier, right, and it also is designed to ensure that our area athletes are able to get the type of competition they need. We realize that the clock is ticking and we're getting close to deadlines. And so while the focus is on individual competition, we also added the relay, and as you mentioned it very clearly, that some of our member federations or countries are on the bubble. And so for the opportunity them to improve their performances, we added the relay to give them the opportunity. And you mentioned Trinidad and Jamaica. We also have Antigua and the Bahamas. Mexico was also brought in their relay team. So it's focused for our area to ensure that our area has the best opportunity possible to qualify themselves. And so I'm very, very excited uh, about the prospects of tomorrow. The competition um, lineup is very, very keen. I think we'll see some very, very interesting performances from our athletes. And we're hoping that our relay teams will be able to perform, to improve their performances on the standing so that they too can represent our area uh, at the Olympic Games. Yeah. Can you give us an outline, uh, Mike, on the protocols involved here? Because COVID-19 still is present, and I'm, I'm pretty certain there are going to be guidelines to how the competitors um, conduct themselves and, you know, the protocols involved at the meet itself. Well, the only thing I heard you say was the protocol. Um, we're putting all the protocols that are necessary in place. Um, as you know, it's a silver label meet um, through the World Athletics, and so whatever protocols has to be established, that is taking place. Uh, we've asked the athletes to present their their COVID test, and uh, that has been done. And so the protocols are all being placed in conformity with uh, the standards of a meet of this caliber. And so there's a lot of little intricacies, um, as you very well know. And so the team is working very assiduously to ensure that the meet comes off to the standard that we anticipated. Some hiccups are there, uh, but of course, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we have to the challenge. We have an experienced team, and we have to the challenge to make it happen. Yeah, so for a change, Mike, we're, we're, we're getting Mike Sands speaking publicly on something that is, um, is very praiseworthy and something to be happy about because you've spent uh, several of the past couple of months fighting the Carifta Games fire. I'm not sure Mike, Mike got that. Yeah, Mike, are you hearing me now? The last thing I heard you say is past couple of months. I'm sorry, I don't know if it's you or me or, yeah. or whatever. No, I, 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 I was saying that it's, it's a, a pleasure to be hearing from you now on a positive note because you have spent uh, the past few months, haven't you, fighting the Carifta Games fire. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we have some technical issues here. So he, he's not hearing us well um, and I'm not hearing him speaking back to us as well. But, you know, this meet, as we just presented, the lineups looking very, very exciting. And for this hemisphere, um, sprinting is certainly a forte for yeah. the Caribbean and North America, the USA in particular. And um, NACAC is embracing that excitement. And there are certainly a lot of sprint events that we're going to look forward to. And I'm pretty sure George and Mar Mara will review on Monday show. For sure, yes, we will review. Uh, you want to call the, 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 the matchup between Elaine and Brianna? Elaine? You're going with Elaine, for real? Of course. But, 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 oh, but, 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 so but, George but, just said he's, yeah, okay, for sure. 
For sure. <laughs> well, I'm going with Brianna. You're going with Brianna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel as if, you know, she... Well, the last time Ilian actually raced was when? In May. Right? And I'm giving Brianna the edge because one, I feel as after she broke that junior national record, she's going to be um, high of confidence and momentum. So Brianna, yeah. it is for me. George, I, I, think, I think Mariah likes Brianna because a Trinidad no. and Tobago um, national coaches her. Yeah. No, that's, Atto, Atto that's not a good judgment <laughs> or assessment. I like Brianna because I think she's really good at what she does. Yeah, would, you she, buy, would you buy a lunch if uh, Elaine wins? No, you all are buying lunch. Wait, weren't we supposed to get lunch today? That's, that's, that's what that's that's a Saturday's race. Saturday's oh, race, yeah. okay. Yeah. Just making sure. So are you buying lunch if Brianna, if, Brianna, if, if Elaine wins? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> your, 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 your wager is worth nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to break. There's still a lot more to come on the Sportsman Zone on this Friday.